go on dark again. Sorry, the sun keeps going in and out outside, so uh, MD's going to be proper moaning at me, telling me that I haven't set the camera up right because my face keeps going dark and light. But yeah, it's the sun. It's not me, it's the sun, and I don't know the camera well enough to sort that out. What is up everyone? I am back. I know it's only been two weeks, but it feels like absolutely ages since I last made a video. In all honesty, I've had flu, my wife's had flu, my baby boy's had flu, probably the dog's had flu, I don't know. But it's been pretty horrendous, pretty tiring, the boy doesn't sleep anyway, so with flu on top, I don't think I've slept probably any more than about five hours in the last two weeks. But I'm back. I've been back in the store. Loads and loads of people have been worrying about energy prices. Um, you know, we're all going to be in the same boat. Energy prices are going up. We've had a few of our customers that run lots of tanks really worry um, about what they're going to do and how they're going to save money. I thought I'd discuss it in a video. It might be quite a long one. I don't know how long this is going to be, but I thought I'd discuss every point of every bit that you can possibly try and, or I can possibly try and think of, saving money in your aquarium. Energy saving tips for 2022. Let's go. So see, you can tell I haven't made a video in a little while because I don't honestly know what let's go was. I don't know what that is, but still. Now, <laughs> joking aside, like I said, everyone's going to get hit by it. It's energy savings going to be a bit of a nightmare for the next few months. But newer aquariums really aren't that bad. Um, uh, yeah, we've looked into it. We've done a lot of research on it. Well, I say research. We've looked at how much they all cost. And they don't actually cost that much to run. Like some aquariums can cost as little as like, you know, a cup of coffee from insert store here um i'm not giving any of them any credit but yeah you know it, it's it's one coffee a week and you could pay to have something like this in your front room i'm obviously excuse the piping on the end i'm still running that fx2 because i haven't done anything with it to put it onto the other tank so excuse the piping at the end that's not normally there don't know what happened there my camera just adjusted and then i was really dark for a minute um i've forgotten where i was so yeah so it can cost as little as a cup of coffee once a week, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, cool. Um, you know, what would you rather have that sat in your front room or a cup of coffee once a week, which I can make over in my kitchen? Yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing this. So luckily over the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, obviously I've been in the trade a long time. All of the aquarium electricals have been getting steadily efficient, steadily more efficient. Um, you know, heaters are getting more efficient. Lighting, obviously the LED lighting is probably the biggest leap forward that we've had in energy saving in all of time. Um, you know, going from fluorescent tubes. But anyway, let's get into that in a minute. So yeah, like I say, luckily everything is moving in the right direction. It might just need a few tweaks or you to look at your aquarium to actually decide what is going to help you really. So let's start with the biggest wattage item in most people's aquariums, and that is the heater. Now, these look really, really scary when you look at them in wattage wise. You know, this one in here uh, is a 200 or a 300 watt heater, which is massive when you think about it in if it's running all the time. But luckily, obviously, aquarium heaters only turn on and off when they're needed. And it depends on what species you're keeping to what temperature you set them to. Now, heaters are normally quite efficient. They only have to heat themselves up a few degrees above room temperature, depending, again, on what species you're keeping. Now, once it's heating a few degrees above ambient room temperature, now that it's heating, I don't think that makes sense. Like I say, it'll only heat a few degrees above ambient room temperature, depending on how efficient your house is and things like that. The good thing is, all that heat's escaping into your house. So... I keep telling my wife that, yeah, it helps with the heating. It's fine. It helps, you know, the heat loss from that goes into the home. Brilliant. Helps with the heating. So there is one way that you can swing it with your partner. Uh, you know, just tell them that it's going to heat the house. It's going to help keep the house hot. I suppose 250 litres of water holds a fair amount of temperature. I suppose, you know, it's just like a radiator, but pretty. So how can you help keep the heat in your aquarium? It's a tricky thing because anything you do to it is maybe not going to be the most prettiest of items or prettiest of things. But this wall behind this tank is actually an external wall, so it can get a little bit chilly. So I have got plans to put polystyrene on the back so that there's going to be a good layer of polystyrene on the back of the aquarium. And that's just going to buffer any heat coming from the wall and any heat loss coming from the aquarium. Obviously, you could put polystyrene on the ends 
I view this tank from both ends, even though that end looks a bit horrible at the moment, but you can see in my tank from both ends, so that'd look a bit rubbish for me, if I'm honest. But if you've got it in the corner of a room, or you've got it, you know, in an alcove or something, you could certainly put polystyrene or, um, yeah, like, uh, what do they call it? The, like, foil insulation that you get. You could put that down the sides just to try and keep and trap any heat in the glass. Obviously, glass isn't greatly efficient at keeping the heat in, so anything you can do to keep it in is going to help. The other thing to look at is obviously your lid. Now, this one hasn't got a lid. I have got plans, possibly, because of the amount of heat loss that this aquarium suffers with. Um, I have got plans to put a lid on here at some point. Now, I'm just going to do a very simple Perspex one. You can get loads of different clips off of different places that clip onto the glass, and then the uh, Perspex can just sit on top. It's just going to add a little barrier to help keep heat in. If you've got a big chunky lid that you can fit stuff inside, you could obviously look at putting foil inside it. If there's a big gap and you've got glass sliding covers, you could look at putting some sort of insulation in the top of it. It totally depends on your light units, how hot they're getting. You have to be very, very cautious with doing anything around those electrical items. So yeah, be careful of that. But if you haven't got a lid, it might be worth just putting a bit of Perspex or a bit of glass over it. You know, maybe when you're not viewing the aquarium, if you're going away for a long period of time, you can stick that on there and you just know that it's going to be a little bit more efficient for that time that you're not viewing your aquarium. Now, the last thing that you can probably try on the heating side of things um, is I forgot. I just went through it in my head. Location. So, um, cut that bit. So the other way that you can uh, try and help your heater along is by making sure the location of your heater is in a decent spot. Now, if you were to hide it behind some of the wood and some of the rocks and there's little flow going over it, that heater might be staying on or might be turning off really quickly because it might be heating up that pocket of water and then, yeah, you might end up burning out your heater. So make sure it's in an efficient location, I guess, is what I'm trying to waffle and say. You know, maybe by an inlet or an outlet of your filter so that there's good and ample water flow going over it. Obviously, this one on here is um, actually in the filter. It's the Biomaster filter um, thermo. So this heater is actually built into the filter, which probably makes it more efficient because it has got water flow going over it completely. Um, you can go and check out my review on that one if you haven't already done it. Like that. See, that's that little YouTuber bit. Yeah, go check. Like, subscribe, comment. Go check out my other videos. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, so yeah, you can make the heaters more efficient by making sure they're in a decent location, somewhere around water flow, not stuck behind something, not covered in plants. That way you're going to get ample flow over it and you're going to get the best heat exchange from your heater. So continuing down the road of heating and temperatures in your aquarium, you could look at what species you're keeping. Now, some people in my shop have gone down to the point of actually getting rid of their warmer tropical species and going down to the more temperate species. So throughout this video I'll probably just be popping up a few different species of temperate fish that will live in cooler water um, and I'll probably just pop that up on the screen to show you guys what other species there are out there that can live in cooler water. But you could have a look at the fish that you're keeping and what they will survive down to in the wild. Now, obviously, for you discus keepers out there, this is probably not an option. Um, you know, things like rams, yeah, anything sensitive like that, you're going to have to be really careful of. But, like this tank here, so this is my rare tetra tank. Now, they're all freaking out at the moment because, in all honesty, I've just done a water change and they're all a little bit, like, down in the corner and uh, hidden away. But I've read that the good majority, if not all the species, I think I went through all of them, they can all go down to about 22 degrees in the, in the winter period where they're from. So actually, I'm running this tank now at 23 degrees instead of my normal, like, 25, 26. Now I'm probably going to just keep an eye on them. I've dropped it down over the course of a week so that it's a slow, gradual change for them. It's not a bang, you know, overnight dropping down to 22. And I'm going to keep an eye on them. Obviously, if there's any signs of any illnesses, if they're getting, you know, not looking quite right, then I'll bump it back up. But we've got to remember, these fish, most of them originate in rivers and streams, and there is going to be massive temperature fluctuations that... Yes, okay, we don't want that to be happening all the time in the aquarium, but a seasonal variance, you know, for a three, four month period could work absolutely fine, and some species do better on it, and also it's going to save on your energy bill. It's a win, 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 win. Now, water changes, there's probably not a great way of saving money with water changes. You're going to need to use dechlorinator, you're still going to need to use the water. 
yeah, there's not any easy ways really of saving money. The only one that I've sort of come up with and I see banded around on the internet a little bit is leaving your water out overnight in your house to warm up to room temperature. That way if you are using a heater to heat it up those last few degrees, it's already nearly there. You know, most houses run 16, 17, 18 degrees, something like that as ambient. You know, if my wife's got anything to do, it's about 20, but yeah. Um, but leaving your water that you're going to water change with out overnight to slowly warm up might be an option. It might just save you those few pennies of, yeah, not having to heat it up fully with a, with a heater. Now, as I sort of mentioned a little bit earlier, another drastic option to go for is to completely get rid of your heater and go down the unheated temperate fish route or cold water fish as people call them. Now there obviously are a lot of different species that you can get that are available in the hobby that will live in unheated indoor aquariums. Um, you know, zebra danios, white cloud mountain minnows, rosy barbs, fancy goldfish, hill stream loaches. Um, yeah, the list goes on and on. Like I say, throughout this video, I'll probably just be popping up different temperate species, different videos of temperate species that I've got, just to give you some ideas of what you can do in a temperate tank. Um, the other tank or the other video you could go and watch is me and MD Fish Tanks went and done a, what did we call it? Can't remember now. It was a stream tank. It was on an angle that was controversial because everyone was a bit weird about it, but it was a cool tank. It had zebra danios, it had rainbow shiners, and it had hill stream loaches in it. That was a really cool cold water aquarium. Um, I'll pop a link in the comments or description or wherever I put it as being that. And uh, yeah, that would be a good one to go and watch because that gives you an idea of what you can achieve without any heating at all. Just a filter pumping the water around. So going alongside the fish, most plants will actually do well in unheated aquariums as well. Um, I've just set up a bowl with my brand new funky ONF light. Um, I'm going to be doing a little review on that ONF light soon because I really like it. It's one of my favourite lights that I've used so far. But I've done a little bowl, it's unheated, it is literally just for plants and for hardscape sort of thing, there's nothing exciting in there. I blocked my dogs off so they couldn't come out to where I am and one of them's just worked out, I can crawl under the chair. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, that's an unheated bowl. Now I've got uh, Rotalas in there, Altonanthera's in there, uh, uh, yeah, a couple other species. I did have one species that didn't like the cold water which did start to melt so I got him out as quickly as I could. But most of the time, most plant species will thrive in an unheated aquarium, um, especially if it's indoors in a warm room. So next on the power hungry leaderboard is old style lighting. Now old style lighting was mega power hungry. Um, you know, a lot of the fluorescent tubes, they're anywhere, well, you know, depends on size, but anywhere 20, 30, up to like 50, 60 watts on some of the bigger boys. Now that is obviously going to be power hungry. You're only running them for eight, ten hours a day, something like that. But it is still a good amount of energy, especially when you compare them to new LEDs. You know, I remember in the uh, shop, we used to have 350 watt metal halides. Now, if you don't know what a metal halide is, old school light unit, pumps out more heat than it does light. Um, they were horrendous for energy, really horrendous. But we had three of those running above our Stingray Aquarium in the shop. Nowadays we have one Kessel, which is the same as what I've got up on here. We have one Kessel, which I think is about 50 watts, if that, I can't remember. But obviously you can dim them, you can control how much power they're using. So yeah, that's a massive saving that you can make in your lighting. So if you haven't updated your lighting in a while and it's not LED, it might be worth paying attention to what you've got in there. Now if you're already running LEDs, there's probably not a great deal that you can actually do. It might be worth looking at how long you've got them on for. It might be looking at how bright you've got them on. You might need to not have them as bright as you want. Or no, sorry. Rewind that. You might not need to have them as bright as you've got them set for the species that you're keeping. This one here, it's all low light plants. It's all crypts and javas and yeah, nothing really exciting on how much light they need. So this one I've dropped down now to I think 40, 50% power running at that and I'm not seeing any detriment to the plant so it will save you a little bit of money it might not save you a massive amount but it all helps doesn't it now next on the uh, energy leaderboard I suppose uh, would be your filtration it's the last component that makes up a tank 
Filtration is fairly good, to be honest, when you look at a lot of the wattages of filters that are there around on the market today. You know, even things like your FX6s, which is doing, what, 1500 litres or something stupid. Um, that's only running at about 40, 50 watts maximum. So there's very little energy consumption on the filters themselves. Yes, they've got to run 24-7, but it's not going to be a great deal of energy being used up. The only thing that I have seen is I have looked around on the internet, I have looked at some of the cheaper brands out there, um, not naming any names, but there are a few out there that haven't obviously paid as much attention to energy consumption. Um, you get it much more in the ponds. Um, something I'm working on for next year is a big pond series, so I'm hoping for that's going to be really cool. But yeah, you do see it massively in ponds. Some pond pumps off the internet, they're three, four, five hundred watts. You buy something that's a little bit more expensive, but from a better company, 30, 40, 50 watts. And like I say, it can be the same on aquarium filtration sometimes. It's so always worth paying attention to those wattages. Yes, okay, it might be a fiver cheaper now, but in the long run, you might be costing yourself triple, quadruple that in energy consumption just because of how inefficient they are. So lastly, any other small bits that you can make a difference with on your aquarium. There's probably not a great deal, to be honest. All the electrical items or the main electrical items are filtration, lighting, heating. Um, so there's not going to be many other big savings that you can make. That being said, I suppose that the other thing that you could look at is all the added extras that you put on your aquarium. Um, surface skimmers, ultraviolet sterilizers, uh, well, circulation pumps, air pumps, all of that sort of thing. You could look at running them less time in a day. So maybe having them on a timer, four, five, six hours, and just running them, yeah, for short periods of the day. This would obviously save you money. The only thing is having a pump or um, a UV sterilizer turn on and off every day could decrease its lifespan. That'd be the only worry I would have. So is it gonna save you money? Is something that you're gonna have to make your mind up on whether it's worthwhile doing, to be honest. Most of those items are quite low wattage, so they're not gonna make much of a difference. But, you know, if you want to try it, try it. If you're going to put your air pump onto a timer, make sure you've got non-return valves on there because otherwise the water will drain all over your floor. But other than that, I don't think there's many other ways that you can save money. If there's any that you think about, drop them in the comments because I'd love to hear them. They're all the ones that I can majorly think of when coming to it. There are going to be some obscure ones that I've probably missed. Um... But yeah, if you think of any really cool ones, drop them in the comments because I'll be really interested and I'll pin the ones that are uh, really good. As always, been you, been you, been you, blah, 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 blah. It's my first video back after two weeks and honestly, I don't think it's been uh, very easy. As always, I've been your host, Fish Shop Matt, here to help you on your fish keeping journey through life. Anyway, um, <laughs> on the next one, don't know what I'm going to be doing. Loads of people want to review on this, loads of people want to review on the Kessel. I've got loads of videos to be doing, so I'm just going to start ticking through them one by one and hopefully get more videos and more content out for you guys and girls. As always, much love. See you on the next one. Bye.